good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under 5 minutes a day. In today's video, we cover personal weather minimums. I will use this opportunity to cover personal minimums in general, rather than just those concerning weather. For today's video, we will use the FAA Safety Team article, Getting the Maximum from Personal Minimums, which includes the Personal Minimums Development Guide. Personal minimums refer to an individual pilot's set of procedures and guidelines for deciding under what conditions to operate or continue operating an aircraft. In other words, personal minimums are the standard against which we judge conditions to make our go, no-go, or continue divert decisions. An example of personal minimums might be a pilot's decision to operate with no less than an hour of reserve fuel during day VFR conditions despite only 30 minutes of reserve fuel being required by regulations. Imagine a zone where accidents and incidents occur. The federal aviation regulations serve as a barrier to keep us from entering the accident and incident zone. Personal minimums serve the purpose of creating an additional buffer between us and the accident and incident zone as well as keeping us from coming close to breaking any regulations. To develop personal minimums for yourself, follow these six steps provided by the FAA. We'll go over each of them. Step 1. Review weather minimums. This step simply refers to familiarizing oneself with the VFR, marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR weather categories. VFR or Visual Flight Rules conditions include both ceilings above 3,000 feet AGL and visibility greater than 5 statute miles. Marginal VFR conditions include ceilings between 1 and 3,000 feet AGL and or 3 to 5 statute miles visibility. IFR conditions or instrument flight rule conditions include ceilings from 500 to 999 feet above ground level and 1 to 3 statute miles visibility. And low IFR conditions include ceilings below 500 feet and visibility below 1 mile. Step 2. Assess your experience and comfort level. In order to assess experience, one could complete the certification, training, and experience summary provided by the FAA safety team and shown below. This involves considering things such as your certificates and ratings held, most recent flight reviews or aircraft checkouts, total time spent flying, and experience within the past 12 months. Next, assess comfort level by recording the lowest sky conditions you regularly fly in comfortably. For example, a brand new private pilot may feel comfortable with ceilings no less than 5,000 feet and 7 statue miles visibility, while a more seasoned pilot with an IFR rating may feel right at home performing the approach and landing to an airport reporting ceilings of just 500 feet and one statute mile visibility. That's totally fine. The FAA recommends referring to flights only within the last 6 to 12 months when making these assessments. Remember, this is all based on personal comfort level. Step 3. Consider other conditions. Again, referring to flights in the last 6 to 12 months, we will assess the highest sustained winds, gusts, and crosswind components we have encountered at the surface. Additionally, one would want to consider aircraft performance. In regards to performance, the Personal Minimums Development Guide recommends recording the shortest runway that you have operated from regularly with each make and model aircraft, and to establish a buffer from there. This method does not factor in changing winds, temperatures, pressure, and altitudes. For instance, a pilot of a Cessna Skyhawk may record landing on a 1,400-foot runway on a day with heavy headwind and low-density altitude. That same pilot may attempt landing at that runway on a hot day with a strong tailwind and find them themselves wishing the Skyhawk had reverse thrust capabilities. A slightly different approach would be to calculate the takeoff and landing distances for the present conditions and to add a flat value buffer to those values. This does factor in wind, altitude, pressure, and temperature. For instance, one may calculate a landing distance of 800 feet one winter day and 1200 feet six months later based on density altitude and wind conditions. If that pilot were to add a flat value of 500 feet to those calculations as a buffer, that pilot's personal minimums would allow landing at that previously mentioned 1,400-foot runway on the low-density altitude day, but would not on the hot day. Either method works. However, the second method might save you some time during Step 5. Step 4. Assemble and Evaluate this step includes nothing more than gathering all the information in one place for use. Step 5. Adjust for conditions. Conditions to consider before or during any flight include pilot's skill and experience and mental and physical condition using the I'm safe checklist, 
aircraft, equipment and performance, environmental factors such as unfamiliar runways and airspace, terrain and weather conditions, and external pressures such as deadlines and reservations or passenger pressure. Finally, step six, stick to the plan. Never lower personal minimums simply to perform a specific flight. Consider making adjustments only when under no pressure to fly. Do not base a go, no-go decision on emotions or premonition. Stick to the numbers. To reiterate, to develop personal minimums, one would review weather minimums, assess individual experience and comfort level, consider other conditions, such as wind, temperature, turbulence, and aircraft performance, assemble and evaluate the information, adjust for conditions if necessary, and then stick to the plan. If you find the Getting the Maximum for Personal Minimums article, you can print off the last two pages, and once you've followed the steps that we just went through using those two pages, you should have a great list to use prior to flights. Additionally, the FAA offers a personal minimums checklist to be filled out prior to flight that may help simplify this process as well. The whole thing may seem unnecessary, but having written personal minimums gives a clear-cut standard off which one may make the go-no-go or the continue-divert decision. And, hint hint, I can guarantee you'll stand out to the DPE when you show up to your checkride with a well-thought-out, completed personal minimums checklist. Always feel free to talk through your personal minimums list with a flight instructor. And remember, there is no shame in having strict personal minimums. Most passengers would prefer to fly with Captain Cautious over Captain Cowboy any day. This concludes today's video over personal weather minimums. I hope that it's offered some insight into the personal minimum development process. Thank you so much for watching. If you've learned something, I hope that you'll consider liking the video or sharing with someone else you may know. Remember to subscribe for future videos and to hit the bell to the right of the subscribe button for notifications. I always appreciate feedback in the comment section. I'm always open to ways to make these videos a little better or to help out further with the checkride or flight training process. Thanks again and safe flying.